Praise the Lord. What a beautiful day today is. The overwhelming, reckless love of God. You may be seated in the presence of God this morning. I'm so happy to be here with uh, every one of you to together to worship the Lord. As always, I say it's so, it brings so joy to come here and worship with you. I always look forward to Sunday morning. I get to see our brothers and sisters here face to face. Many of you are not here this morning. I know you are seeing me face, my face, but I don't see your face. But I trust that I'll, I, uh, you're watching me. And I am, in my imagination, I'm seeing you face to face. This morning, I pray that the Lord will speak to your heart through the word of God. So for our meditation, I'm going to ask you to just turn your Bible to if, uh, Epistle of Philippians, chapter number 3, verse 13 and 14. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for unto those things which are before. Listen to the verse 14. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. A blessed word of God. Let us pray that the Lord will speak to our heart through this word this morning. Father, we praise you, we thank you for the word, eternal word that you gave us this morning. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass. We trust that you will speak to many who are watching and every believers who are here this morning. Speak to my heart. O Holy Spirit, use me for the glory of Jesus, that the name of Jesus be glorified and uh, people of God will be edified. Deliverance be brought and uh, blessings will come. Lord, I praise you and I thank you that your word is powerful. The word is alive. This word will change people who are listening this morning. Lord, I pray that you give us a heart of hearing this morning. Give us a heart of hearing this morning. Give us a heart of hearing this morning, O Lord, that we will understand the things of God. The mighty things of God will be revealed to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This passage, as I was studying, it came to my mind the first day of this year, which is 2020. The morning, early morning, just after midnight uh, of 31st and coming into the 1st of January 2020. I took this passage and uh, spoke from this in a different way. Two points I brought uh, and I remember and I, I am, I'm thankful because I make note of my messages. So I keep and go back to this. I was looking through this. Two points I talked about this without knowing there's going to be coronavirus coming. I didn't know I was uh, prophesying to the people who are listening. That's why I say, you need a heart of hearing. I said two things, the two points at that time. Usually I speak three points. One of the things I said, make a decision to forget those things that, are, that you need to be forgetting. Second thing, make a determination to go forward with all your strength, concentrating on the promise of God. Basically, the number one thing I said, there are a lot of obstacles come in your way. I specifically highlighted that here. There are a lot of obstacles come in your way that will stop you from going for, forward, but you press to go forward. I remember this and I was so thankful. The Lord knows all about us. There's a lot of st- obstacles in our way, but we have to press forward to go forward. And I thank God for that word that the Lord gave us on the first uh, moment of this year. And I, I looked through my note. I said, what an amazing thing. At that time, I didn't know we we're going to face challenges in our life. This morning, I want to say a few more things about this word. Not the same message, by the way. I try not to repeat the same message even though we use the word of God because the word of God is powerful. Yes. word of God is not ret- written anymore. The Lord, Lord gave us book of Re- uh, Genesis to book of Revelation. There is no other word of God that if somebody come and say, I have a revelation from the word of God, a new word will not be there. They may have an illumination about some things to tell you, the Lord put in their heart, but you will know that if it is real or not by aligning your uh, God-given direction. And the being married, I, I just want to specifically say that to you. The marriage will come. If you listen to the word of God, that will also come. And uh, you are wondering why this is not happening in my life. Why I'm not getting a promotion. Why I'm not getting healing. Why I'm not the Christian the way I should be. Why am I not the faithful one I should be? There is times in your life you, <coughs> you need to give up something and go forward. 
so i want you to underline that verse 14 if you never underlined that before i press toward the mark i press toward my goal i am going to not stand here anymore i am going to press towards to the maximum i can go to the power to through the power of the holy spirit that is vested in me god gave uh, god paid a great price on the cross, cross of calvary god paid a great price on the cross of calvary to redeem me he found value in me he found value in you he sent the holy spirit as the leader the other day couple of children were asking me questions and uh, about their future and uh, this uh, young youngsters i was talking to them i said rather than praying you, you must change your prayer life i'm just deviating from my topic i know sometimes it happens maybe somebody want to hear this so and uh, i said usually what we pray is i am going there holy spirit help me lord jesus come with me lord holy spirit empower me instead of praying like that pray to the lord like this holy spirit lead me and holy spirit help me in your leading holy spirit because those who are led by the holy spirit are the children of god if this morning you are claiming you are a christian and you are not led by the holy spirit there's a problem in our life and i told them pray that prayer the lord will take you to the place that you need to be so press toward the mark is the one i'm going to ask you to underline if you have never underlined that verse number uh, uh, 14 and in another translation when you look at that word that uh, paul wrote i run toward the mark i am not just standing i'm just going very fast last sunday we talked about passing very fast through the valley of baka you are just not standing there you are not uh, walking you are just running very fast and paul is saying i am running i am running i'm running because i have a plan the lord put in my heart i am going to see this morning i just want to remind you something you want to be successful and you know that you will be successful but the problem you are not successful is because of what i will give an example i always tell this to my children i my expectation for my children is 110% there is only 100% usually but my expectation is above and beyond the percentage you want to reach to the goal you have to let go something i was researching about the trapeze trapeze is a, a the history says that it was inv- invented in 1859 by a, a french man french uh, performer and uh, actually this person Uh, uh, they want to do some performance using a, a device and the name came from the french language trapeze trapeze is a, a gymnastic uh, device that is similar to a swing it is a small piece hung up in the air uh, uh, hung up on the roof or some uh, bracket or something and you can swing on it like a tweety bird swinging a small one but there will be a big swing on the other side usually you can see that in circus a person would be swinging from the other side and come to the person on the trapeze because they are going to sh- uh, they are going to show some show but in order for that person swimming swinging come to the trapeze he or she have to let go from that swing and come here if you are holding on to that swing you will never get to the top of that uh, that uh, auditorium i always say to my children if you want some to attain great things in your life you have to let go of the small things in your life you are holding small things in your life small bickering things that came many years ago and uh, murmuring about just let go and just go forward so you need to let go from what you are holding on right now and to reach and take hold of something new Amen. that's what paul is saying that i know i have a high calling in my life every one of you have calling in your li- uh, in your life realizing of your calling in your life will help you to make your life a success that's what paul is talking about here three things i want to point out not the two points or three points i talked on the first of january this is a new new thought so look at three points will be number one from the, based on this verses 13 and 14 paul is saying that he has a higher call number one is a higher call you want to say can you repeat after me i have a higher call in my life if god willing i'll speak about the calling in your life another day i am praying about that and preparing notes on that one calling in your life i think that will open up your eyes so i don't want to release what uh, the lord is teaching me about the calling in your life the time come i'll i'll preach on that one 
please uh, wait for the calling in your life but this uh, morning number one point is you have a higher call not just any kind of call call comes in a different level yes. Amen. i was uh, uh, reading an article many years ago and uh, this article i i cut i uh, i cut that paper clipping and put it in my office room so i can look at it once in a while it's pinned onto the wall so sometimes it reminds me about call in your life so this is what happened many years ago uh, they used to use uh, uh, telegraphic messages before we had all this internet and all this uh, cell phones and whatsapp and uh, facebook and all this high speed uh, communication they used to use uh, a device uh, that they will they, it's called morse code messages they tap on it it gives words and they they are uh, people who are expert on that they can hear the tapping and they can make words out of it that's the way the message went out so the message was out there they want look they are looking for this company is looking for somebody who is an expert in morse code translation so he can take the code and and uh, release the message out to the public so it came in a, a newspaper as a public message uh, there's a job opening in this famous place it's a big company they want somebody it's a higher salary and a higher position early in the morning when the place opened 8 o'clock in the morning uh, the people start lining up listen to me carefully this morning I, i want you to pay attention what we are saying because if you don't pay attention you miss so and this uh, this story also you'll hear somebody miss something so this uh, people were all standing in line to get the job and they are all waiting for them to call in so they can go for a job interview they all have their credentials in their hand saying that i am qualified to translate the morse code and all these people hundreds of people are lined up and about little afternoon these people are still land, standing in line because they are not called in a young man a handsome looking tall man just uh, cut through the line and went to the office and then uh, after about uh, 15 20 minutes he, he came out smiling and uh, he told all these people don't stand in line i got the job they all got mad at him because look at it's not fair we are standing in line from 8 o'clock in the morning little afternoon you come and cut through the line and you went and you got the job well what happened and there was a morse code was going through the speaker saying who who can realize recognize his voice you can just come in because you get the job he he knew the code and he went in because all these people did not understand the code they are still standing in line and i hope you get the message there's a message come out every sunday morning one word or two words will speak to your heart and you receive that and i was looking through my old note i said man one about 7 uh, 8 months ago there was a point here and i didn't even know there's a lot of obstacles come in your life that may try to stop you but by the power of the Ho- uh, holy spirit you must go forward the title was going forward so this morning i want to say that you can press and going forward because if you know that you have a higher call number one higher call in my life Amen. because you have a high calling in your life you must be willing to make certain t- type of a level of adjustment in your life to that higher level of adjustment to reach to the higher uh, higher goal so because of your higher call there's an adjustment don't do the adjustment in a lower level the higher call is looking for a higher level of adjustment in our life we are still like here and walking and trying to make adjustments but the call is like right here in other words you need to grow up when you are a child paul said when i was a child i spoke like a child i walked like a child i spoke i behaved like a child when i became a, an adult when i grew up i i behaved like an adult it is in the epistle of 1 corinthians chapter 13 but when you are a child every children like to play with toys some people they like cars they like some people like uh, trucks some people like uh, barbie dolls some people like uh, different different th- uh, no uh, Uh, lego all kind of stuff but say suppose you are a child and you like toys and you like airplane toys and you play with it it fascinates you and when you became older and you became a pilot you will not try to fly on that you will not try to fly on that toy airplane you will put away that toy airplane and get on to a larger jet and pl- fly that plane to the longer distance with a lot of people If you say I still want my little toy plane you will get nowhere. Yeah. So we at some time we have to give up that plane that you really like get to that bigger plane. 
That's what Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord says, my thought about you are a, in a higher plane, means a higher level. This morning I want to say to you, Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to speak into you. Some are still married to a 45 year old child. Your husband is 45 year old. I hope nobody here 45 year old watching me this morning. And your husband is 45 and you are 42. And that husband is still acting like a child. I think he did not get mature. He is still playing with the toy. He is not understanding this woman next to her is not a baby girl that she is playing with. He, she's got the same feeling that he has. It goes the other way too. Some women are playing the childish game too with the man. Still a 45 year old baby child woman. It's very important to grow up. Then only you get married. Some people are so childish. The wife is carrying three children. Two on, one on the left arm and the one on the right and the husband baby also. Otherwise he will not go. Because the way you looked at me, I don't like the way you looked. I didn't like what you said. You picking on my father. You picking on my mother. Hey, grow up and just be a man. I, if I'm speaking to somebody, you just grow up. So, a realization of your higher call makes the difference in your life. When you get married, you have a higher call to play with that wife, not like the little child. I hope you got my message. Apostle Paul, an apostle to the Gentile, when you study, I really like Apostle Paul. I was teaching Apostle Paul to a group of people the other day. He's a, an example for me. He was a working pastor, by the way. And he, if you don't believe me, I'll show you the word of God. Say, let other pastors be an example of me. He says in the word of God. Right, Viji? There's a word of God. I taught the family and health group. It says that I want other pastors to be an example like me. I work with my hand, earn my living and did the ministry. How many churches these pastors, they call, I'm not picking on any pastors by the way. They call so-called full-time ministers. And how many churches you pastor, how many churches you planted. This apostle Paul pastored many churches and planted many churches. The first church of Europe came, the church of Philippi came because of the man Paul, apostle Paul. He did everything. He went around, taught he started New Testament churches all over in Asia Minor and Europe. Through his ministry, many people came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. He wrote several epistles that we read. And one of the epistles that we read, Philippians is also the one that Apostle Paul wrote. And he had, according to our viewpoint, he had accomplished many things in his life. But yet he says, I count not myself to have apprehended. I still don't feel I have not reached to the point that I can say I'm satisfied, so I'm still pressing forward. He wants to press forward to reach the mark for the price of the high calling in his life. You have a calling in your life. Once you realize it, it will make you a successful person. Point number two, to, make that, uh, to be that successful person and once you know that calling in your life, point number two is you must forget those things behind. That's what Bible says. Forget those things behind. To reach the mark for the price of the high calling, you must let go of the things of the past. It might come to a surprise for you. You are willing to let go of your failures of your past. You are willing to let go of your difficult time that you faced in your life in the past. You want to let go of the fears that fear, that still that fear that is in your heart about something happened in the past. And you are so excited to let go of the guilt that came from something you have done or something you have said in the past. But also, you must let go of something else. That will surprise you this morning. Let go of the victories of your past. Let go of your accomplishment in your past. Let go of the good things and the th things you have done. And you are so proud of the things. Let go of that thing in the past. When you let go of the past, means let everything go in the past. Yesterday is gone. Because if you don't let go, something else will happen. Yes. Holding on to the bad or good things of the past will hold you back from going forward. Yes. Holding on to the bad, you will have no confidence in your life. Every time when you sit down to pray, Satan will bring that thing. Remember, 10 years ago? Well, you already confessed that. Bible says when you confess a sin, word of the Lord says, the, the Lord is just and faithful to forgive you and forget your sins. He forgive your sins and he put the sins under the ocean, bottom of the ocean. He will never, Bible says, he will remember your sin no more. And, but you remember. 
you are not willing to let go what have you committed in your life the blood cannot wash away bible says what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus the blood of jesus christ will wash away all your sin so don't hold on to your bad things in the past that will give you no confidence if you did but what will happen if you hold on to the good things in your in your past i have done this i am successful i prayed the sick, the dead man came alive and i prayed the leper got healed and uh, i uh, went there and did that and all these things you can boast uh, those days when i prayed the heaven came down and glory filled the room all good things but you are bla- you are still claiming or boasting all the good things of the past that is what we call the pride of life i'm not talking about the testimony to bring glory to the name of jesus sometimes you must say the good things in your life so others will be edified but if you are just dwelling on the past the thinking about that the pride will come and you will not go forward i already accomplished proverb uh, solomon wrote like this book of proverb chapter 16 verse 18 and verse 23 pride goes before the fall i thought it is an english saying but i found that it is in the word of god right pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall so he came from solomon any man who are proud about some accomplishment be careful about that i would say when god do something through you i always tell you know i bring young disciples like timothy through my ministry many many uh, youngsters you know I, i try to bring up on personal level i talk to them when they come and say pastor i prayed and this man got healed i say be humble don't boast about this you can use it as a testimony to tell others to bring them to god but give all the glory and honor to god because he is the one healed you cannot even move an ant if you are tired and paralyzed only god can do miracles so it's important to know that we must be humble before god humble before the god in the mighty hand when god do great things in your life god is a good good god so you must uh, forget the things uh, in the past in order to go have to go forward you know there were a lot of people who were there holding their uh, past in their life and they got in trouble one example that we see israel were holding on to their past while they were traveling to go to the promised land i know these days i use a lot of example about israel i don't know why but anyway bible says it is written for our example so i use it why not use the example because I, they are an example they were holding on to their past while they were going to the promised land they have get out of the slavery and they knew there was so much trouble they knew that lord promised them a good place ahead of them and they are going to go forward numbers chapter 11 verse 5 we remember the fish which we did eat in egypt freely the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic why are they saying all these things and complaining about the little vegetable they got i love the vegetable garden don't uh, no, no i'm not blaming those who have good vegetable gardens but they were in the wilderness they are complaining and they are so much complaining and saying we miss our vegetables that we had we miss our fish egyptian egyptian fish is one of the best one by the way i tasted it i traveled uh, many part of the world in my life so far i traveled many countries and in many places i traveled one of the best place the fish i got was the egyptian fried fish if you eat one of the egyptian fried fish indian fish will not come close to that indians know how to fry fish but if you go to egypt you'll say i need to learn from them they make the best fried fish go there and try it out so these people are complaining that the the fish that we had in egypt and all that we ate freely and the cucumbers they are all good things healthy and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic is good for you but why are they saying this look at verse number 6 they say now our soul is dried away there is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes so what they are saying is when god is giving them the heavenly manna i like to talk about that but the time is not permitting me but i just quickly say heavenly manna is called the angel food heavenly manna is called the heavenly food it's the heavenly meal that they were getting daily daily and bible says none among them were weak all the children of israel they were healthy people by taking the heavenly feast and they are still complaining they wanted the former things in their life they said i wish i could oh, we wish we could go back to egypt and had our fried fish 
they want to hold on to their old things but what does the prophet isaiah say in isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 we are looking at isaiah chapter 43 for the last 2 3 weeks isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 says remember remember you not the former things neither consider the old things for you to get to the new you must let go of the past this is what isaiah is saying that remember you not the former things don't remember don't try to bring back the old things in your life yesterday is gone today is the day we have to uh, face the challenges remember not the former things neither consider the old things so i i say uh, is saying that in order for you to get something new you must let go of the past like i was talking about the trapeze and the swing you want to get to this higher place you have to let go of the lower thing you are just like tarzan game he jump in the tree from one tree to another th- hanging on a vine he just go very fast and he is not holding on to the one behind he is looking for the one ahead of him if you want to grab the one ahead of you you have to let go of the past it doesn't matter what the victory he say oh i jump from that big tree to the small tree and from here to the big tree you may have a big victory in your life the victory and the big tree has to go back and go for the things the lord have appointed for you to the friend before you whether the past is good or bad you must forget about that i say i say god will make a new way where seems to be no way but only if you are willing to receive the new way in your life So I say in chapter 43 verse 19 uh, it says behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth I want you to underline that verse if you have not I will do a new thing and it is coming up right now that's what it says I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth you may have underlined it before and shall you not know it you know that in your heart God is preparing new things but you are not receiving it because you are still holding on to the old thing so I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert and uh, even when you think and see things that you say that oh this is not going to work out because this is never going to happen this is so much dried up the word of the lord says he will even bring waters in the desert spring of waters and i say i saying don't you know it he will make a way in the wilderness if you think that your way is closed shut closed the lord can open a new way for you It's very important to know that you must forget the things of the past to go forward. Point number 3, you must press forward. Pressing forward is easy to uh, say it but very difficult to do. I will also show you some example from Israel also, but uh, some of the things that I have already mentioned the Canaanite woman that she want healing in her family. She want healing for her daughter was so sick and she came even when she did not deserve it. She came to the Lord Jesus Christ as a foreigner she said lord jesus even dogs can use the crumbs that falling out of the table i am not asking for the bread but i still need healing for my daughter the lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you ask or imagine if you only can press forward to trust him and press forward in your faith so pressing forward is very important in your life point number 3 if you are in a crowd and if you want to go forward and you will have to press forward and push the crowd and go forward you seen that i i went to new york city when uh, the before pandemic many years ago my wife and my children i want our whole family to see new york so we went all over it was so nice to see uh, the big crowded place very good place to go visit and the sidewalk is full of people if you want to go somewhere you have to kind of press forward to kind of press the people you don't really like priya you been the new york city right it's not just easy at that time no, it probably is easy now but you have to kind of press through the crowd to get to the place you have to get in order for you to go forward otherwise you'll just stand there for all day you will be right there in the middle of the city manhattan probably you're just standing there thinking how can i uh, I'll, i'll be very nice to these people let them all go i'll go you'll wait till midnight even midnight the city doesn't sleep you will stand there the next day doing the same thing that's why you are not getting anywhere you want to get somewhere and you know that there's things ahead of you but you are not pressing forward so pressing forward is very important you will press forward then there is when there is an opposing force come to you that's when you press forward 
opposing force you press you will have to press forward when there is resistance in your life without pressing forward you will not reach your goal i have to use the example of israel about 600000 men if you read the bible you will see that about 600000 men and their women and their children that's what bible says if you read the bible say 600000 men besides the women and children so their women probably equal to 600000 women and then maybe more and children if you look at two children those days there is five or 10 children think about the multitude of people traveling from egypt because god promised every one of them the same promise that the new testament gospel giving it to you today whatever the promise jesus christ is giving it to you every one of you the promise of the lord from israel was at that time i am going to take you to a land that you have never seen before your father have inherited it many years ago abraham but now you are slave over here but i am going to set you free and the lord led 600 men 600000 men and their women and their children they are so happy they are singing the song of moses you read that in the bible they were singing the song of moses they are so happy and they are coming through wilderness to go to that dream city to be successful in their travel they say that i am going to go there make my own vineyard i don't have to work for somebody i'll be my own boss i'll have milk flowing through the the ground and honey will be flowing through the other side and uh, i'll have a lot of wine and i have all these things over there i am going to be the successful person in the world they had the joy of the lord at that time and so they came forward but bible says only caleb and joshua were the only two reached to that final goal that's what bible says even moses miriam and aaron and rest of them died so why joshua and caleb were the only one able to reach the final goal while others were perished in the wilderness numbers chapter 13 we see why moses and tall leaders from each tribe search out the promised land and uh, and they went and searched the land and 10 out of 12 came back and gave them bad report this is what i call a committee driven church that's not my topic to talk so i'm not getting in there wherever a committee driven church i can say that freely here i'm not working under a committee whenever i do things here i do it because i started the ministry i thank god all the board of members are helping me in the ministry if they don't have the same vision this will never grow what happened is god gave a vision to moses to go forward instead the ten you will say oh that was god's plan if you look at the book of deuteronomy you will find out because they wanted it told people were appointed that's what it says i'm not getting it that's not my topic but it is what happened is this told people came and looked at the land and 10 came back with a bad report only two came back with a good report numbers chapter 13 verse 30 bible says and Caleb still the people before Moses and said let go up once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it when people were fighting Caleb came and pressed them and said don't don't say that let's press forward to go inherit the promised land that's what Caleb said so what did the Joshua did numbers chapter 14 verse 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 verse 6 and Joshua the son of Nun the and Caleb the son of Jephunneh which were of them that searched the land rent their clothes when they heard the bad report they started ripping off their clothes they were so upset these 10 people are speaking against the promise of God and verse 7 and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel saying the land which we pass through and search it is an exceedingly good land verse 8 if the lord delight in us then he will bring us into the land and give it to us a land which floweth with milk and honey and they are saying that lord promised this to us and we'll get it what only thing is verse 9 only thing you must do is don't rebel against the lord and don't fear the people in that land because they are afraid of us 
their defense is departed from them and the lord is with us don't fear them let us go forward that's what uh, uh, joshua and caleb said when you come to numbers chapter 14 verse 24 we see something very important the lord's word says but my servant caleb because he had another spirit with him and has followed me fully him will i bring to the land and also his children will inherit the land when you obey god and go forward victoriously by obeying god this is not enough god i want to attain more from you because your ways are much higher than my ways and your thought about me is much higher than you my your thought about me is much higher than my thought and then you say i want to reach there and not only you will be blessed your children and children's children will be blessed and this opposition that came to the children of god is same it is still true today when you want to go forward there is obstructions comes and then you find blame my mother made me to do it or my father made me or my wife did this i mean we find excuse uh, excuse after excuse so many people are content with what they have and where they are today they are perfectly okay they are content with what the lord have done in their time in the past they only have the past to rejoice but bible says jesus christ is same yesterday today and forever yesterday you were victorious that's good but you must be victorious today and you will be victorious tomorrow if jesus christ is same yesterday same today and same tomorrow you will be victorious yesterday you will be you were victorious yesterday you will be vi- you are victorious today and you will be victorious tomorrow some are not free even knowing that instead of always knowing that the lord set me free they are still claiming bondages in their life they are bondage they want a breakthrough in their life all the time the lord gave them breakthrough the moment you are born again and if you are need a breakthrough as a born again that means you are never born again that's what my bible teach if i accepted my lord jesus christ as my savior that moment i became into the uh, children of god i became a child of god so some are not free all the time instead they are always in bondage of sin god desires to do a new thing in your life but they don't want that but this morning allow jesus to set you free if you have never received that freedom because bible says if the son sets you free you are free indeed the son is jesus christ today jesus is calling every one of you his strong and loving arms are wide open to receive you will you accept his high calling in your life if you have never accepted jesus christ as your personal savior and receive the freedom from the bondages of sin so you don't have to run around for to get freedom and deliverance because deliverance is there by the blood of jesus that's what my bible teaches My Bible says when the son sets me free that moment I accept Jesus Christ that moment I became a child of God he set me free Amen Will you accept his high calling in your life if you have never accepted the Lord Jesus and received the freedom and freedom from the bondages of life this morning The only bondage the only binding for a child of God is written in the word of God For a child of God I'm saying this very clearly for a child of God there is one bondage what is that pastor i thought when a child of God there is no bondage there is no binding right yes there is a binding that is written once you are born again you are a child of God there is one binding that is in the book of acts chapter 20 verse 22 paul is writing and now behold i go bound in the spirit unto jerusalem that means wherever he went he was bound by the holy spirit one hand a chain on him other hand holy spirit has a chain on him holy spirit is a person he is a god the bible says those who are led by the spirit are called the children of god the moment you are born again you become a child of god you are led by the holy spirit allow the holy spirit to lead you your one hand is chained to him and one hand you are walking because the chain is on the other hand of holy spirit that's not literally the way it is but holy spirit is leading you allow the holy spirit to lead you to the places that you ought to go to be successful you will never be a failure yes. so here paul is saying that now i behold now behold i i go bound in the spirit unto jerusalem 
that means i am led by the holy spirit this morning allow the holy spirit to lead you when you are led by the holy spirit you are victorious many people are not they don't have victory in their life because they are not led by the holy spirit today you you hear the word of god i say pastor thank you for that word was for me i receive it next day you fight with your husband and say i have no deliverance and next day you come back and go for, go for again i i want deliverance where, where is the deliverance the one moment jesus set you free that is the moment you are set free you will never find deliverance in your life if you don't take the truth in your heart god came to set you free god the son of god jesus christ paul is saying this is not enough i'm going forward knowing my victory in jesus christ because i have a higher call in my life holy spirit will help you to press toward the mark for the price of the high calling in christ jesus if you allow him to have you ever responded to the high calling of jesus in your life if not today is your day yes. i want you to stand on your feet as the lord's message was spoken here i hope you paid attention i i prayed that lord give me a heart of understanding and i hope you prayed that prayer lord give me a heart of understanding if you did the lord gave you understanding through the word of god if the sun set you free you are free indeed you have a higher call in your life in the in summary i want to say this to you when the moment you receive the call and you accept and re- respond to the call and say lord jesus i accept you in my life that is the moment sun set you free Bible says in the book of Romans now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus and knowing that with that higher call pray lord holy spirit lead me let me follow wherever you lead me i will go let the word of my mouth and the thought of my heart be pleasing to you oh god let that be your prayer let the word of my mouth and the thought of my heart be guided by the power of the holy spirit lord i surrender my life to you holy spirit i give my life for your leading let holy spirit lead you today press forward for the holy spirit leading and press forward to the higher level in your life and to be successful in your journey so paul is saying i want to press forward i'm not saying i attained everything i know there is things ahead of me that i can go and and receive it there is things waiting for me i am going to go forward i am going to press forward i am going to run forward i am going to receive it till i receive it i am going to go and go and go and press but i am going to do one thing i am going to forget about my past the past failure the past victory the past whatever this morning if you are willing to let go of the past god is going to bring something new in your life if those who are watching me if you have never accepted jesus christ as your personal savior if anybody here don't have the assurance of salvation if you still think you are in bondage i want you to give your life to the lord jesus this morning say lord jesus i know that your word says if you set me free i am free indeed that means i am free forever amen let the lord jesus christ come into your heart this morning allow the holy spirit to lead your life So pray this prayer those who are watching if you have never accepted Jesus Christ in your life you have never prayed that prayer you pray this prayer Father I thank you for your son Jesus that you sent him to this world for to die for the sinners I know I am a sinner forgive me I repent of my sin accept I accept your death on the cross and your blood on the cross to wash away all my sins i know that you died and you resurrected because of your resurrection power i can live i can face my tomorrow so i i accept you in my life in jesus name i pray if you prayed that prayer you are born again this morning if any one of you watching me or here this morning you know that you slowly slipped away and pres- and from the presence of the lord and you know that you are bondage in darkness this morning say lord jesus wa- i'm coming back wash me with the blood of jesus let every hands go up and receive the word we'll pray father i praise you and i thank you for the powerful word even apostle paul 
accomplished many things in his life started many new testament churches in asia minor and europe wrote many epistles for our learning and understanding for our edification even he said is not enough i want to press forward because i am not claiming i attained everything lord the same mind i thank you for speaking us this speaking to us this word we receive your word help us to press forward in our christian journey to be successful in our journey of father that bring glory to the name of jesus i thank you for all the listeners who listened and accepted the word of god and accepted jesus as their personal savior you bless them we thank you for your blessings that you showered upon us we praise you we thank you we give you all the honor and glory in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of god may the love of god the father the grace of the lord jesus christ communion of the holy spirit abide with us now and forever amen and amen at this 